Hello everyone at home and welcome to the set of Vogue Arabia's 50 year anniversary. I have here today three incredible ladies that I admire so much. I would like to start by introducing Nadine Jaim, beautiful and talented actress Thank from you. Lebanon. Thank you, Manuel. Huda Katan, beauty mogul. Thank you. And mm -hmm. Amina Mouali, who is a fashion icon and a shoe designer to the stars. This issue is about, all about uh, women that are taking the Arab world on a global stage. So I would like to start by asking you, Uda, what makes Arab women unique? A lot of things make Arab women unique. Having grown up outside of the Middle East and moving here later on in life, I was so amazed by the strength and creativity in Arab women. I actually find them to be so passionate and so, so, so creative. Nadine, how do you see the role of, of Arab women changing over the years or, or recently? It is changing a lot. Now Arab women are more dedicated to their goals. They want to achieve uh, their dreams. They, want, they, they don't accept any more boundaries, even though they respect culture and traditions and religion, but they, they are more into proving themselves in many, many fields. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, for you, you, you don't really live in the Arab world. You, you live in France. Uh, are people curious about your heritage and where you're coming from? Usually people are surprised because many times people that have my heritage don't necessarily arrive to get to do what I do in fashion. So I, I think it's more like a curiosity for people and they find it rather different that I, that I you know, I'm half Jordanian, half Romanian and um, I work in the fashion industry and, you know, I'm so connected to Italy and France but still very, very rooted into where I come from, where I come from. One of the things that, that I love about your story is that you started literally from your kitchen mm -hmm. and uh, with, uh, with the loan of your sister to create your first uh, set of lashes. What advice would you give to uh, other women that want to start their careers in business? When we started, my sister gave me $6,000 as a loan. Um, That's a nice sister. <laughs> she's a very nice <laughs> sister because there, it was not promising then, actually. But you know, at the time, we were so scrappy and we just did whatever we needed to do to make things happen. We didn't think, like, how are we going to make it happen or what is the end goal? We just moved forward and made things happen. And to be honest, as you know, as you go through business and as you grow, sometimes you stop doing that. And um, I think maintaining a scrappy, you know, just self-starting type of attitude is very, very important to, to get things done. What do you feel that, like when you go to, let's say Sephora and you see your name everywhere? Because like even for myself, as a friend of yours, when I see it, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so proud of her. And the thing is, it's not even only here in the Middle East, it's also globally and worldwide. So how do you feel to uh, achieve this success on a global scale? It's a lot of hard work. Um, and I think, um, you know, when you do go into Sephora, when you see, you know, your image or something, it's very gratifying. And I feel very grateful to yeah. the people who, you know, put me there, you know, and it's all my, my community, um, our followers, they're the ones who put us there. Similar question for Amina, because I, I always say to these two people, like if you go to China or to Saudi Arabia, every single girl in an event or a party is wearing your shoes. So I wanted to ask you, what is the, the secret of the, your success, the secret of your success? I'm always surprised and I'm always amazed and I'm always so happy to see women wearing my shoes everywhere I go. It's, it's such a dream come true. And I don't think there is a secret. The secret is to be passionate about what you do. As a woman, I think of women when I design. So I want them to look good. I want the shoes to be flattering. I want them to be comfortable. So I think I think about creativity, but I also think about how a woman feels when, when wearing the shoes. I want her to feel confident, I want her to feel beautiful, and I want her to feel comfortable. But it's, it's not just like, like I was saying, like normal girls. You also have in the list of your clients, Rihanna, Kim Kardashian, Beyonce. So it's like, it, it, it's really incredible what, what you achieve. Like Huda, do you still get excited when you see someone wearing your shoes? I think it's very important, and I think if you lose the excitement, you lose the passion for what you do. So. Mm -hmm. It's fundamental to keep that excitement and to keep feeling like you still haven't achieved what you want to achieve and there's so much more that you can do. And to be grateful for what you have, that's very important as well. And uh, for Nadine, you are also like in a business that is super, super competitive, acting. And uh, so many <laughs> girls look at you and they, they aspire to be like you. So I wanted to ask you, after all the awards, after all the incredible cinema and TV that you've done, how do you also manage to uh, stay on top? I try and I keep on trying and I keep on pushing and I keep on challenging myself. 
this um, when you want to be an actress you need to um, to improve yourself and you need to challenge yourself from a role to another so I always work to give my best not just to be the best because uh, when you work with passion and you have big dreams and you still uh, consider that you are still learning, you are in the learning process, you will always give your best. And uh, the secret behind it is just, I keep on challenging myself always and keep on searching for great and good opportunities. You were in Beirut when the terrible and traumatizing uh, explosions happened. How, how did that impact you uh, as, a, as a woman, as a, as a mother? And is there an Nadine Jaim before and after the explosions? Definitely, I have changed a lot. Before the explosion, sometimes I get mad for silly things. Sometimes I, I care about people's opinion. Or for example, when you know, as we are exposed on social media, we all um, we are all exposed to bullying or to bad comments or haters. And you know, sometimes you you want to read because you're curious to know what's going on, and you want to read the comments or block people or whatever, delete. I used to be really uh, let's fragile so after the explosion i became stronger i became careless i am more attached to my life i'm more attached to my kids i'm more attached to make my dreams come true to have a better future to achieve everything that i want to be i'm so away from everything that is negative i'm so away from everything that may distract me or may affect me negatively. So I became really someone more positive, more enthusiastic, more um, more loving life. And I'm very grateful that I'm still alive. And I'm very, very grateful that even though I had to go through a seven hour surgery for my face, and thanks God, the scars, I can barely see them. And I'm happy with what is left in my body or even my face. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy I'm back. And I'm happy that I'm still here to achieve more and to make all my wish come true and to see my kids growing next to me and in my arms. Both of you ladies, you didn't grow up in the Arab world, so how was it growing up and being different? It's challenging, you know. Um, it, did, did you ever have a moment where you didn't feel enough or not pretty enough or yeah. because you were not fitting the, the standard of, of the place where you were brought up? Yeah, every day. Um, probably every moment, to be honest, when I was a child. As hard as it was, you know, my parents immigrated from Iraq to the States and I was born in the States and I grew up in the South. So it was a lot of, you know, very light skin, light eyes, light hair. Um, children and I was, you know, brown and everyone was like, what are you? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so it was a little bit hard, um, for sure. And when you're a child, you're sensitive to those things. It made me who I am but it also made me have to get out of therapy. <laughs> but it's been one of the things that's also created this resilience in me, this toughness within me. Um, I'm really tough inside, and I think it's because of my circumstances growing up. What about you, Amina? How was your experience? Well, I am actually lived for the first six years of my life in Jordan, even though I don't remember everything, but I do have many memories from that time. I did feel like a normal person while I was there. And then when I moved to Romania when I was six, that's definitely when I felt the difference. My mom, she's uh, white and very light skin, and my dad is Jordanian and dark skin. And when I moved to Romania, I was uh, very much bullied for my skin and for my nationality. I would cry and tell my mom I want to be white like her. Today I'm so grateful for who I am outside and inside. It really made me so much stronger and uh, definitely growing up in first in Jordan, then in Romania, then in Italy. I moved when I was 16 and I started high school there. It really made me feel like I can belong anywhere and I don't belong anywhere. So it kind of makes you grow up in a de-rooted way, but it also makes you feel like a citizen of the world. Nadine, what was the craziest thing that you read online about yourself? That people uh, know things about me that I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> so How many really times crazy. did you get pregnant? Yeah, you, they people like, say that you have yeah, four yeah, legs. Exactly, <laughs> they just create stories and uh, that you know, like, oh really, I did this, oh, am I like that? And the craziest thing that, like, um, she went through a lot of plastic surgery. She has done this and that, and then I'm like, oh no, I didn't do that. Okay, this is okay. This is okay. I'm fine with the perfect No, 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 I didn't. It's, it, it's part of also of our business to expose ourselves to, to, to the readers, to your followers, to your fans. So how do you know when to stop? When is it like that boundary that, that you are tempted to, you know? How, how do you know, like, private life, not private life? It's hard, you know, and I think you do cross boundaries sometimes. Sometimes you say, oh, maybe I shared a little bit too much. Let me go back a little bit. 
but we're always kind of, you know, trying to figure out what is okay with our community and what isn't. I think all of us probably share too much sometimes and then we're like, oh, maybe that was a little bit too much and maybe let me stop doing that. But I also think you have to listen to your community and sometimes also some of those vulnerable moments, some of those really real moments are also what the community needs. Um, I found that my community actually really likes some of the personal things. Um, especially hearing about my story, which I'm not always comfortable to talk about. I'm getting more comfortable now, but I think it's important to, to test and learn and to listen to your community. What's the best part and the worst part about being a Minamwadi? The best part about being a Minamwadi is that I get to do what I love for a living. And that's, I think, the biggest blessing. And the worst part is that I don't have enough time for my personal life. The same question for, uh, for Nadine. What's the best part about being Nadine Njoyme and the worst part? The best part is um, I am an angel. That's quite good. That was a good answer. I know, I know, you know, I'm so happy that I'm born. <laughs> and that my name is Nadine Njoyme. But the worst part is, of course, that you, you, you lose your private life. You don't have... Uh, um, privacy at all, being famous and being successful, the price is too high. But then you get you get used to it. With time, you get used to it. But, but how do you control yourself not to, I can tell you, even sometimes with us with a magazine, I read some comments and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, oh, I wish I could answer. Yeah. So how yeah. do you manage that? I manage with time and years and a lot of hard work. And after so many, let's say, uh, uh, crying, uh, moments i learned to to uh, to control my reactions even though sometimes some comments are really 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 very rude and you know they cross the limit but what you can do you know that those people they're not really talking about you they're talking mm -hmm. about themselves they yeah. represent themselves it's the way they are um, um, they, the way they are raised uh, the way they are educated it's, it's not your responsibility. You cannot just uh, blame yourself. You didn't do anything anything wrong. They are wrong. You know, the, what's the best thing about being with the Katana and the worst? I know it's like that. The best thing about being with is being with them. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm, I love to do what I, um, I'm, I'm honored that I get to do what I love to do. Um, and that I know, a lot of people don't even know what they want to do. Um, you know, I love, I genuinely love applying makeup and playing with makeup. I could do it for hours every single day. I still feel like a child when I play like with makeup. I feel like I'm learning and I'm so curious. So I, I definitely think the, the best part for me is to be able to, to you know, to be a part of the, you know, the Huda Beauty brand. Uh, last question now. So Vogue mm -hmm. is turning five. Uh, so I would like to know your goals for the next five years, your personal goals. And I start with, with Amina. Well, definitely um, continuing to establish my brand and what I have built so far and growing it more and more. We have so many, so many plans, so many projects, so that's, that's a priority for me and I hope that we can reach um, all, the, all the goals that we've set so far. Is there anyone that you still want to be, to so see many. wearing your, your <laughs> shoes? Oh, women, um, women wearing my shoes. Yeah, there are so many women that I would love to see wearing my shoes. So many women that I admire and love and appreciate are wearing my shoes, but there are so many others that I would love to see in, in my shoes. On the red carpet? Anywhere. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, Michelle Obama, she wore our wall for collaboration, but she hasn't worn my shoes yet, so it's definitely one of the women that I love that I would love to see in my shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, Nadine, the goals for the next five years? For the next five years, so um, as I took off this year from acting because I want to focus on the brand so I really hope by next year when I launch the beauty brand so I hope I will uh, succeed in this new uh, new step of my life I always had passion for beauty I always had passion for skincare I always had passion for makeup and it's something that I really really want to do and so I hope I will succeed in this you know world domination mm -hmm. that we're all trying to achieve <laughs> for, for the next year we um, you know we have a lot of plans uh, to really get a little bit more into the tech space within the beauty brand. So um, you know, we're looking at the NFT space and all those things. I'm very personally motivated by it and I see it's a world where all brands will actually need it. I also think personal personalities will need it as well. So it's something that I'm very excited to venture into.
Thank you very much. I hope that all of you have a, a, a nice day on the shoot. I had a blast. We had so much yeah. fun. We worked really? a lot. It was uh, we mm -hmm. started very early, but I think that the the pictures <laughs> are are beautiful. And uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. And uh, we hope that you like our 50 year anniversary issue. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>